The song I'm singing today was written by the Deweys, my dear friends back in Tennessee, and I pray it'll be a blessing to your heart. Everyone has a dream Never let your dream die It takes patience and faith in God To keep your dream alive Without faith It is impossible To please God Without faith It is impossible To please God This is what the Bible says Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen All things are possible if you have faith as a mustard seed God has a perfect plan, yes he does you and I will just need to let him work out each part. You see, he has promised to give us. Thank you, God. The desires of our heart, but without faith, it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All things are possible if you have faith as a mustard seed. And the measure of faith that God gives to me it must be evident in my life to help me live more abundantly and to show God's power and might. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I want to share with you today on what may sound like an unusual subject, but I believe it's going to minister to your heart, and it's so necessary for this day and age in which we live. I'm entitling this message, Lying wonders lying wonders and the purpose of this message is to illuminate to your hearts to remind us all of the danger of not knowing God's word regarding prophetic utterances and spiritual manifestations there are numerous scriptures in God's word 
that emphasize how important it is for each one of us to be led by the Spirit of God and to know the Word of God. Why? Because Satan disguises himself, the Bible says, as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. And he has deceived many very sincere people who lack the ability to rightly divide the Word of God. I want to give you one scripture just before we pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. The Apostle Paul says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Father God, I pray this morning as I share this simple but very, very needful message out of your word that you will speak to my heart and the hearts of all the others, that you will illuminate your word to us, God, that you will help us to know your word and to know the voice of your Holy Spirit so that we are not easily led astray. Father, so we are not sucked into the devices of the enemy and the false things that are going on all over our world today. Give us grace, Father, to know your word, your spirit, your will, your way, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read you some scriptures. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Truth. Is what we're going to emphasize today. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, he says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man, and that would be men or women, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Folks, let me just ask you today. Are you spending time daily in the Word and in prayer? Coming to church on Sunday morning, maybe getting in on a Sunday night Zoom meeting or a Wednesday night prayer meeting is good. We want you to do that. But we need daily instruction in the Word and by the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 2, Paul speaks of not handling the Word of God deceitfully. And I'm going to tell you, my friend, there are people out there that are handling the Word of God deceitfully, trying to lead others astray to enrich themselves and their ministries, and they're claiming to be the mouthpiece of God, but they're not. Listen to what he says, 2 Corinthians 4, 2. He says, but have... Renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And that's what I want to do as a pastor. Each week I pray God will give me not a message, but the message, the message that you as God's people need to hear to encourage your hearts, to make you bold and confident in the Lord Jesus Christ, and to keep you from believing a lie. Let's move on. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Did you hear that? God's talking about His people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 2 Peter 3, verse 5, speaks of being willingly ignorant. 
And then that chapter later on in 2 Peter 3, verse 18, it says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And then he comes along in 2 Peter 2, verses 1 through 3, and issues a dire warning. I really want you to hear this. He says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, meaning secretly or privately, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, mm -hmm, and through covetousness shall they with feigned pretended words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. The Bible tells us that there are going to be people stand on the judgment day and Jesus is going to look at people and they're going to say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. Now, I maybe seem to be coming on really strong this morning, but I'm giving you what God laid on my heart because we are living in a day that is filled with deceit and lies and strange doctrines and new thoughts and so forth, and people are following after it. I don't want that to happen to you. One of the probably most, probably one of the most common beliefs concerning prophecy and signs and wonders is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22. This is what the Word of God says. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, meaning it doesn't happen, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now, I believe that. But I also know that we have to hear from God for ourselves in regard to prophetic words. Why? Because that is not a one-size-fits-all word. Probably the... Uh, most obvious example of that would be Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God. He was given a word to take to Nineveh, and he didn't want to do it, and he tried to run, and he got on a ship, and you know what happened. He gets thrown overboard because he says, I'm the problem, and he gets in the belly of a great fish, for three days, and he repents, and he says, okay, God, I'll do what you're telling me to do. You talk about God forcing someone to do something, and he gets vomited up on the seashore, still alive, probably covered with the whatever was in that fish's stomach, and he goes to Nineveh with a prophecy from the Lord. <clears throat> 40 days, and Nineveh is going to be destroyed because of your sin, because of what you're doing. And guess what? It did not happen. Why didn't it happen? Most of you know the story of Jonah. Because the people repented, not just one or two. The king, sackcloth and ashes, they cried out to the Lord for mercy because they believed the word of the prophet. And what he said was going to happen did not happen because they repented. And this is sometimes the way God works. There is a word, but sometimes people's response 
can change that word. Anyway, I'm going to keep moving on here, but I want you to understand you can't do it like it's set in stone. Oh, somebody said something was going to happen, and it didn't happen right then, and so they must be a false prophet. Let the Lord deal with your heart as to whether or not you should have believed that prophetic word to start with. Let the Lord make it real to you. Don't just believe somebody because they're on TV or because they are supposed to be a prophet. But listen. Study the word of the Lord for yourself. There are times I've heard people say things and I think to myself, that doesn't line up with the word of God. And sure enough, it didn't come to pass because it wasn't in line with the word. But there are people like Jonah, and I want you to know that this is what happens. God tests people's hearts. Your heart. My heart. I'm going to read you a verse from, uh, four verses from Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Listen to what he says. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, meaning it does happen, whereof he spake unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. Now, stop right there. I'm going to keep reading. But did you get that? He is saying that Satan has the power to do certain things through people who are false prophets. And he gives a word or a prophetic something, and it actually comes to pass. But his purpose is to get people lead them astray to get them to follow other gods or other ways which are not according to the word of God he said I didn't send him the Lord is proving you he says back to this you not hearken verse 3 thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God proves you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. That's not the only place in the Bible where the Bible says, I've got a short one for you out of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. He says, Thou shalt remember... All the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you. You know what that means? He's testing you to see where you're at. To know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. I have another example of this. This is found and this is lengthy, but I'm going to read it to you. 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 15 through 24. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Now, who are we talking about? God had sent a prophet from Judah into the ten tribes of Israel to prophesy and say, This altar is a false altar. It's going to be torn down. The ashes are going to be poured out. Well, the king, the ungodly king, Jeroboam, was there. And he says, take him, hold him, bind him, make him a prisoner. And then his hand froze and he couldn't pull it back again. All of a sudden, the king's attitude changed. And the altar fell apart and the ashes were poured out, just like the prophet said. And he says, please pray for me that my arm will become like normal again. So the prophet prayed for him and his arm became normal again. And the king says, oh, hey, you're really a man of God. You got to come back to my house. I want to treat you right. I want to give you a big meal and, and bless you. And he says, I can't do it. Can't do it. Cannot. 
I'm not supposed to eat anywhere. I'm not supposed to drink any water or eat any bread, any place. I'm supposed to go straight back home. God sent me here to do this. And even though the king was inviting him to his house, he turned him down and said no. There were two young men there which were the sons of a prophet. They told their dad about what they had seen that day and about how the, the ashes poured out and the altar was just according to the word of the Lord. They said, that, that was amazing, Dad. And he said, which way did he go? They said, well, I think he's going home that way. And he says, saddle my donkey for me. And he gets on his donkey and he rides after this young man. Now here's where we're going to pick up. He gets to the young man and he says to him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said the same thing in response. He said, I may not return with you, nor go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that you came. The other, the old man says, he said unto him, I am a prophet also as you are. And an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you something that if you don't know this story, this man that just lied to him was a real prophet of God. God was testing the young man to see. He'd already done what he was supposed to do with the king. Now came another test to see if he would do what God said or listen to somebody else. Oh, I'm a prophet just like you and the Lord, an angel told me. And guess what? He bought into it. Verse 19 says, so, so what? Because he lied to him and told him an angel. And he was an, a prophet too. And an angel told me that I'm to get you. So he went back with him, did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. This is the guy that lied to him. God's word came to him, and he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Forasmuch as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and have not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded you, but came back, and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to you, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. Wow. One minute he's lying, the next minute he's giving a word from the Lord. Folks, we don't understand. I told you a few minutes ago, God tries the hearts of his people. I don't care if the person is saying something is famous. You have to know, I have to know, we have to know what the Spirit of God is saying to us. We should all know His voice. I'll get to that in just a moment. Okay. Verse 23, And it came to pass after he had eaten bread, after he had drunk, that he saddled him the donkey, to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. Now I will tell you that this is an unusual situation in that you have another verse which sounds like an absolute. All liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burns eternal. And yet God used this prophet to go out and see if this man would disobey. He tried his heart, and he failed. He won. He did it right with the king, but not when it was a prophet claiming to have seen an angel. He should have said, if the Lord doesn't tell me 
that I can go back. I don't care what you saw. Do you understand me today, folks? It doesn't make any difference if you saw an angel. I have a word from the Lord. And you and I do too. It's right here in this book. We know what God said. Now this is unusual, I'll grant you. Very unusual. But the prophet didn't hate this young man. He went after him, found his carcass, brought it back, buried it. And amazingly enough, the lion didn't eat him. And the, he and the lion and the donkey were just standing there together. Donkeys don't stand by lions. It was a God thing. But it was a very unusual God thing. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 8 and 9. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed, for they falsely prophesy unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. We're living in a day and age that I believe the Bible says even the elect will be deceived if that were possible. And what he's saying is, if we are the elect of God, that is not possible. But if we're not careful, full of care when it comes to following other people's direction, we can be taken in. We can be deceived. God laid this message on my heart. I didn't come up with it. And I believe that we're living in a day and age that it's only going to get worse. There's going to be all kinds of people saying all kinds of things, and we need to hear from God for ourselves. That's why you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in you to guide you into all truth. I'll read that verse in just a minute, but let me, let me go back to our text for a moment. I'm not going to read that whole thing, but it talks about deceivableness. That means ability to be deceived because they receive not the love of the truth. Amen? That was verse 10. And then Paul says in Galatians 4.18, he says, Am I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And then back to our text, verse 11, it says, For this cause God shall send them strong delusion. What? Lying words. Lying wonders. That they should believe a lie. God's going to send Strong delusion because he wants people who know his voice and are led by his spirit. And he can and he will do that for you and me in this day and age, regardless of what's going on around about us. i got to wrap this up. Matthew 24, 24, Jesus himself said, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and she'll show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. He says, if it were possible. And what he's saying is that if you and I will walk close to the Lord and be his elect, be his chosen, that it will not be possible for us to be deceived and led astray and believe the lie because we know his voice, and he says, a stranger they will not follow. Amen? Amen. That was a weak amen, but I got it. <laughs> Revelation 19.20, talking about the Antichrist and the false prophet. It says, the false prophet that worked miracles before him, meaning before the Antichrist, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. He's going to be able to work miracles. Satan has power. But these are lying wonders. Oh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. 
The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. You hear that? People can prophesy out of their own hearts. What they think and try to make it the word of the Lord. He says, that they're those that prophesy out of their own hearts and say to them, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. You have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divinations, saying, The Lord says, and the Lord has not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. I'm telling you, my friend, it's happening today. It's been happening. You can look back, what, 30, 40 years to the Jim Jones. He had all these people that thought he was the voice of God. They all end up drinking the poison and dying. At one time, he might have been okay, but he went astray started listening through covetousness, the Bible tells us. Remember that? Deceivableness. They don't love the truth. People tried to warn these people that were part of that, his temple. They tried to tell them, this isn't right, this isn't good. Oh, no, he's a great man of God. And he took them right to their deaths. He's not the only one. It's happening all over the world right now. You have to be careful what you're willing to listen to on TV. Not everybody that claims to be the prophet is a prophet. Or that claims to have a word, have a word from the Lord. You have to know. You have to believe, sense it, receive it in your own spirit. Ask the Lord. Are you telling him this? You speak it to me, Father. Let me know. Confirm it to me. I don't want to believe the lie. Ephesians 4.14, Paul says that we henceforth be no more children, meaning immature, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. If it was true then, we're in the last days. Don't you think it's even more true right now? I do. Romans 16, 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly there again there's that covetousness what's in it for me I'm going to take advantage of people's naivety I'm going to take advantage of their trust he says, they serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Well, my friend, I'm not the wisest person that ever lived. You may not be either. I'm not Solomon. I've made mistakes in my life. But listen to me. The one I serve knows everything. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's not going to be the beginning and the end. He is. He doesn't live in time like we do. He doesn't just know the future. He is the future. And he has all the wisdom. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Not of some guy on TV. Not some radio preacher. I'm not preaching against them. Many of them are fine people delivering the word of God in a wonderful way. 
I'm just saying you and I have to know in this day and age. We have to know. We have to hear from the Holy Spirit in us. We have to be led. Wow. And judge everything. This is, I am closing. Judge everything by the Word and the Spirit of God. And I've been quoting this to you, but let me read it to you. John 16, 13. How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. It doesn't mean he's just not going to talk about himself. He's not going to speak of, of himself. It's not going to come from him. He says, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You and I have the Holy Spirit within us if we're believers. And he wants to show us things to come. He wants to speak to us of the things of God that he knows, and we have to know his voice. John, last verse, John 2, 26 and 27. This is 1 John, pardon me. 1 John 2, 26 and 27. He said, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing, which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, I know this has been an unusual message this morning. I like to preach messages that encourage people and lift people up, but when the Holy Spirit lays something like this on my heart, I have to bring it or I would not be faithful to the Holy Spirit in what he's telling me that we, our people, need to hear and the people watching this online need to hear this message. It is the Spirit of the Lord wanting to wake us up, to make us aware, to sensitize us to his voice. And friend, you and I need to be spending time with the Lord every day. We need to get in his word. We need to know his word. So when someone says something that's contrary to the word, we will know it and say, that's not Bible. That's not right. We need to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. But we also must be careful, like in a case like Jonah, that we don't, because God did something different, that we don't judge other people and say, oh, he was a false prophet. He said 40 days destruction was coming and then they repented and it didn't happen. Jesus called him a prophet in the New Testament and said there'll be no sign given unto you except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. So I want you to bow your heads with me, if you will, for just a moment. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, I have brought your word today as you have brought it to me. And I believe it's an important word for this day and age. I pray, Father, it will be listened to by many online. I pray, Father, this word will go forth with power and with anointing. And give us, Father, what we need to be true, to recognize truth, to know truth, to receive truth, and not be deceived not be the simple, not be led astray by those fathers serving their own belly. Father God, I just ask in Jesus' name that you would touch our hearts and change our lives today, cause us to seek you every day, for we are living in what your word says are perilous times shall come, and men shall be lovers of their own selves, and so forth. Father, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit. We need Jesus. We need your word in us and your spirit in us to guide us into all truth. And I'm asking you, Father, in Jesus' name, to do it for everybody here today. Please hear my prayer, Father. Let every person here today be quickened by your Holy Spirit, whether young or old, male or female. Let every one of us today, and that would include me, Father, be quickened by your Holy Spirit to know truth and to know the word and the voice of your Holy Spirit, that you will lead us into all truth. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name.
Amen and amen.